Greetings, white positive community. Your blue ninja, one of many apostles for white well being, here with you. Sending you all my best, warmest greetings with love, respect, appreciation, admiration, and support as usual. Hope you're all doing well. Today is a momentous day, as always. Thursday, January 14th. Realized that my instinct was right yesterday. It was the 13th. I thought it was, but I think the guy at the other place I was at yesterday messed up. So, should have trusted my instinct there. And we should all trust our Western bio spirits. So, indeed. 13th yesterday Wednesday today Thursday the 14th um, I'm coming to you from East Los Angeles area east of the Los Angeles area uh, at my trucking place um, camping out for the afternoon and the evening and going to be doing a night run to Las Vegas tonight so um, maybe more to come tonight so again I hope you're all holding up well in these times that we're in just like Charles Dickens said I think it is absolutely correct now it is the best of times and it is the worst of times both obviously the best is white positive as to what we mean and the worst is anti-white. It is the most white positive times and it is also the most anti-white of times. That's a lot of times how God works when we have incredible evil and incredibly bad things happening. A lot of times, like Jason talks about the inverse, it will bring around the good. It will create that need. It will shine light on the opposite or what is missing. A lot of times that's how things work. That's what some people call divine providence, where some things that people mean for evil, the anti-whites, God can use that stuff for good. God can use all that stuff to wake people up to anti-whiteism, and it will cause people to go free and become white positive where they may not have to otherwise done that. Sometimes, even though it's painful, we need that jolt, we need that jab. Like Jason talks about with the military, with all the stuff, the acts he's been talking about from Biden. He's been going through these things, showing us all just how bad things are getting for whites, how anti-white things are getting. And hopefully, because of all of us, the public at large, and the white public at large will see this. Now, this is painful to see this anti whiteism rear its ugly head, but it also wakes people up and helps people to go free, see it, counteract it the right way, going free, becoming white positive. Now, we're going to go with another sermon here. Another sermon before I try to lay down to get some much needed sleep. I'm in that delirious state. Sometimes I have trouble turning my brain off. <laughs> um, and uh, so might as well make a, vi a video. Um, got a few points that I've stacked up over the last couple days um, that I'm finally getting around to put on video here. Um, so we're going to make this another white positive sermon. Before I do that, I'm going to say T minus on an exciting note. T minus three days. Three days. Not including this one. Until flight time. Until the Blue Ninja takes flight. Taking flight on Monday, this Monday, the 18th. 
all the way halfway across the world to the land of Eastern Europe, Belarus. Excited, it's gonna take me a day to get there. With the time change, I'll arrive on Tuesday evening. And um, probably won't be making videos during that time. Maybe, maybe I will make some short ones just to show Belarus. Um, and uh, maybe, maybe uh, some of my family, maybe my daughter, the real treat. Um, so probably won't be as many videos as usual over that next couple weeks from the 18th to the 4th. I'll be coming back on February. Just FYI, all you good people that have shown concern about me, I definitely can use it all and I appreciate it and I give all my concern right back to each and every one of you. I'm concerned for everyone out there and I do what I do because of everyone out there and I know that it's all reciprocated. We are each other's motivation. When we look in the mirror, that's our motivation. When we look at each other, when we look at our families, that's why we do everything we do. So I sincerely appreciate and thank <coughs> everyone for that. And um, anyway, just FYI, it'll be two weeks where probably won't be making many videos there. I'll be good, I'll be fine, I'll be in that wonderful land of Belarus, Eastern Europe with white people, white family, and the next generation of Blue Ninja. It's going to be a female Blue Ninja. And man, she does, she does have my likeness. She takes after me. I'm so obviously thrilled and lucky and thankful for that. Um, I think it's pretty clear that she's, she's, she's a spitting image of the Blue Ninja. And uh, so that's very exciting, obviously. Um, so T minus three days. Got this trip to Vegas and then some work over the weekend and I'll be working all the way up until Sunday. And then I'll be getting ready to head out on Monday. Um, gonna have to find a place to get COVID tested, which you can imagine don't really want to do at all but gonna have to do that somewhere on Sunday because it has to be close before the time of flight and since it's a very long trip uh, the test only is good for like three days and my travel time is gonna be like one or two days <laughs> you know it's gonna span over two days so I'm thinking I'm gonna have to do it Sunday and uh, and then get ready to get on that jet plane, head across the blue. Blue Ninja heading over the deep blue to a beautiful white land, beautiful white people. And um, anyhow, um, so that note, T minus three days. Um, you can tell I'm excited about that. Um, and now getting on to the sermon for today um, got it written down a little piece of paper that I from the last hotel I was at a few days ago um, been adding to it over the last couple of days some of these points I've already talked about in previous videos um, and some of them I haven't so before I get into the new ones just a reminder of what we've talked about prior last video talked about us being on on a mission on a mission from God we are on a white positive mission from the Lord talked about that this is why because it is a spiritual battle why is it a spiritual battle like we talked about because anti-whiteism is a religion it is not a science it is not a 
policy. It's reflected in policies, but at its root, it is a religion based on myth, based on complete falsity. So because anti-whiteism is a religion, that's one of the reasons this is a spiritual battle. And that is why we are on a white positive mission from God, from the Lord. This is spiritual. This is, this is religious. This is a religious issue here. This, this anti-whiteism, white positivity, this is spiritual and religious stuff. That's why we got to look deep within. We got to look to what is unseen, what is seen and unseen. Um, now, what I didn't mention last time because I didn't have the paper, what I had written down and what I alluded to was, you know, talking about how we defeat anti whiteism and how we need to replace it with something. We have to, religions have to be replaced. That vacuum must be filled. So we replace it obviously with white positivity, with going free, with white well being. Um, and what I implied but didn't say is that if we have a new religion, we have a new world. So this is even like the Bible, the Bible talks about when. That's how we bring about a new world. The Bible talks about, in the end times, a new heaven and a new earth being coming down and being created, put in place. The old earth will pass away, and maybe the old heaven, I'm not a Bible expert, but it talks about a new earth. coming down and being in its stead and even a new heaven maybe so the old will pass away and the new will come in now we are bringing that new in and that is a very exciting thing that's why we are the Lord's servants truly I believe in my heart so how do we bring in that new world by bringing in a new religion New religion means a new world. Now you could say it's not really new. <laughs> We've been around for a long time. The Western Biosphere, God has been around. Christ has been around for, for us Christians. You could say it's not new at all. But in a sense, we're manifesting it new. New religion, new world. White positivity. Now the other point I had written down that I didn't get to which Jason has also talked about as far as how one of the tools we can use to bring in white positivity is intolerance. We need to learn to be intolerant. We have been far too tolerant, <laughs> obviously for far too long, of our own erasure, of multiracialism, of non-whites, of anti-whites of anti-whiteism. We've been far too tolerant of all these things. Jason made the very interesting and good point, I think, that we need to be intolerant. He said we need to be as intolerant of anti-whites as they are to white positives. So they are obviously intolerant, very intolerant of us. And they make it public every single day in the media. We, how do we fight that? We, just like Jason said, I think is true. We need to be as intolerant towards them as they are to us. So they, they want to call us anti-white slurs. They want to be intolerant of us. They want to resist us. They want to fight us. They want to erase us, push us out, destroy us, harm us, de degrade us, deride us. They want to do all those things. They want to be intolerant of us. We can be intolerant of them. We can say, well, we are not tolerant of you, anti-whites. Your anti-whiteism is 
intolerable to us and we will not tolerate it anymore. That's how we do it. And how do we do it? We point it out as anti-white. We point it out as anti-white and that's why we don't tolerate it. So we need to learn that intolerance. Intolerance is a good thing here for us whites. We whites need to learn this. We're told all the time that tolerance is a good thing, obviously. Um, obviously that works against us. And that was a trick. So we need to learn to be intolerant. That's hard for us because we've all been conditioned to be tolerant of everything for so long. We need to learn to be intolerant of things that should not be tolerated. Um, bad, evil things like anti-whiteism should not be tolerated. That is a good thing to be intolerant of things that are evil and harmful toward us. So we, the proper thing and the moral thing for us to do and the right thing is for us to be intolerant of anti-whiteism, of anti-whites, of white erasure. So we need to learn that intolerance. And um, so I guess I'll just mention a few more things here, keep this video relatively short um, as I'm starting to get a little woozy here, you can tell. Um, need some food, need some, try to try to rest a little bit. Um, some of the anti-whiteism I saw today, or that I've seen over the last couple of days. Um, I saw on YouTube, there's a new Amazon original, wouldn't you know it, movie out apparently called One Night in Miami. Not that any of us probably pay any attention to this other than just noting it that it's anti-whiteism. Obviously we, would, we wouldn't watch these movies. But just noting how extraordinarily extreme companies like Amazon are getting um, with their anti-whiteism. Um, Amazon original movie called One Night in Miami. And it celebrates with actors. It celebrates for black for black people in America who were all anti-white, um, almost guaranteed. Um, there's only one I wouldn't be so sure about, but I'm pretty sure he was probably anti-white too. He was, a, he was a singer. Made some good music that I like, but um, he was a big time singer uh, with the big time music company, so he was probably anti-white. Now, One Night in Miami, this movie is set back in uh, 1968, I think. And it celebrates these four black people in America back at that time. Number one, Muhammad Ali. Number two, um, Jim Brown, two athletes. Number three, Malcolm X, hideous anti-white philosopher, hideous anti-white activist, you could say. And then also Sam Cooke, the singer. Now he's the one I probably like the most. I like his music, but he was probably anti-white. So, um, now apparently this one night in Miami there was a um, 
1968, there was a Muhammad Ali fight. Um, Jim Brown played in a football game for the Cleveland Browns apparently that night too, or that day. Maybe it was a Sunday, I don't know. Um, and there was uh, Malcolm X probably gave a speech that day or that night. And um, Sam Cooke probably did a concert that night. So they call it One Night in Miami, 1968. All those things happened. Muhammad Ali, Jim Brown, Malcolm X, Sam Cooke. They're all black. They're all almost guaranteed anti-white. And so, um, now we know that era in the 60s was anti-white. What they would call civil rights, quote, civil rights, is anti-whiteism and that we all know now we see that they're trying to revive all that stuff all the anti-whiteism from the 60s they're trying to revive it all now by bringing back these old figures malcolm x martin luther king muhammad ali he was political he was anti-white as all get out in the way he talked and that's why he made his change his name from Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali. He embraced Islam and that version of Islam in America was being used against whites. The black Islamic community, a lot of them were anti-white back in those days. So Malcolm X influencing Muhammad Ali, Cassius Clay, Jim Brown was also an anti-white activist as well, disguised as being pro-African or whatever. Uh, and Sam Cooke probably was as well. Um, so what we see now, why is Amazon making a movie about this? Well, they're, as we know, they're just trying to revive all that stuff from the 60s. I've seen lots of stuff where they're trying to bring back all that stuff, all that 60s era anti-whiteism, using the anti-white slur that begins with an R, A-C-I-S-M, reviving all that stuff just to be anti-white as we all know and like Jason talks about every generation that it comes around passing generation it is more intense it is more extreme uh, it is to a more extreme level anti-white so that's what we're seeing now as compared to the 60s just same anti-whiteism, more, more of it, and more intensity of it. Um, so that was disgusting, seeing that uh, movie from Amazon, completely anti-white. Um, Now, I'll just finish up here by talking about um, a couple other things I saw. One thing I saw a bumper sticker today that said, resist hate. It just said, resist hate. Now, what does that mean? As we all know, hate in the anti-white narrative is just a code word for white people. So when they say resist hate, what are they saying? They're saying resist white people. That means they're actively resisting fighting against white people. In, partic in particular white people who try to defend ourselves. That's what they call hate and they resist it. They're resisting white people, they're resisting white positive people. When they use that phrase, resist hate, 
they were setting themselves actively and openly against whites while taking from us and our civilization. So that should show that those people that want to put up that kind of a bumper sticker, they, if they are saying resist hate, they, they are openly and actively and consciously against white, white people. That's what that means, as we know. So, so how do we defeat it? We defeat it by getting outside of that narrative, the anti-white narrative, and we just call that, if somebody wants to call us haters or hate or call our speech hate speech, we just say that's that's the anti-white narrative. You're speaking with anti-white terms inside the anti-white narrative using anti-white slurs, which is all that is. And I am not in that narrative. I am going free of that anti-white narrative. And I and many others are white positive. We serve white well-being. Period. That's how we defend against that, as we all know. We are outside the anti-white narrative, where all that stuff is. We are in our narrative, white positive. With the one objective as the well-being of white people. Now, So as we see, there's lots of craziness going on in the world. We have a lot of, you know, a lot of craziness going on in the world. There have been anti-white riots in the past year. There has been COVID due to anti-whiteism, a plague. There's been anti-white tyranny that is, has ensued. There's been many anti-white hate crimes and murders and destruction of our civilization and our people. There's been, most recently, protests by a largely white crowd in Washington, D.C. that the government is setting their stance against, showing their anti-whiteism yet again. Even with all these crazy times, and people are all feeling it. People are talking about gulags. People are talking about going into camps. We know that's what anti-whites want to do. But... We see other people going a little bit crazy. But... We need not go crazy. We need not panic. Why? Because we are inoculated. We are inoculated from the disease of anti-whiteism. Just like Jason talks about, we reach children, white children, we, we reach white people, and anyone else who wants it with this inoculation, with the cure, for anti-whiteism, which is going free, serving white well-being, becoming white positive. We are inoculated because we are outside of the anti-white narrative. All the bad stuff, all that chaos going on is happening inside the anti-white narrative. We can step outside of that and have an outside perspective by going free. by stepping outside of the anti-white narrative, being white positive. That is how we are free from going free from all the craziness in the world because it is an anti-white world. It is the anti-white narrative. We are inoculated by stepping out of that, going free. 
so we can look at it from kind of an outside perspective and know that we have an inoculation. Now our job obviously is to spread this inoculation, this cure to as many people as we can, as many whites in particular. All of course are welcome to go free from the anti-white narrative and become white positive. We whites need to do it the most. We have an imperative for our own survival and well-being. To carry on our great white western bio spirit. Now, so that is why we can take hope and why we can be grounded and level-headed even in these crazy times because we are inoculated now we have a duty we are inoculated but just like Jesus Christ told his disciples his 12 apostles he said don't don't put a, a basket over your lamp over your light don't cover or hide your the light the gospel that you have that has been imparted onto you. Don't just keep it for yourself and hide it. Spread it to the world. Let it shine. Uncover that light. Uncover that beautiful white western light, which I would say as a Christian is also the light of Christ, the Lord. Uncover that light, the gospel of white well-being. And cover the light, let it shine before all men, as the Bible says, all men and women, all people of all nations, let it shine. Let that white positive light shine into the whole world. Let that light penetrate every to every corner of the earth. And let's reach everybody with this inoculation, this message of hope, this gospel of peace, of white well-being. Let us, let us spread this to as many people as we possibly can. as a cure, an inoculation for everybody else out there, as many as possible, so that as many as possible can be saved and healed. We are healed, let us keep healing others. Let us continue healing ourselves and healing others. So good apostles, keep on with our glorious mission. Stay strong, keep heart. And I'll end this now. <laughs> you can probably tell I need to lay down. Um, I'll see you all soon. I love you all. God bless each and every one of you. Lord, give us all the strength. May the Lord give you boldness, boldness and courage each and every day. The Lord will come to the aid of those who do His work. So just step forward in the Lord, in white positive faith, and the Lord is with you, each and every one of us. So many blessings. from the Lord Jesus Christ as I believe stay strong stay white positive let's keep going free